Thanks for joining us for CBN News Today. I'm Ephraim Graham. And I'm Heather Sells. French police are feverishly hunting for two suspects from Wednesday's shooting at a Paris newspaper. The Islamic attackers slaughtered 12 people in that attack. The suspects are brothers who have been on France's radar for a while after being tied to jihadist fighting in Iraq. And as the manhunt unfolds right now, there has been another shooting. Dale Hurd has the story. A French police officer has died and another has been gravely wounded in a new shooting in the southern Paris suburb of Montrouge. Police said it was too early to draw a connection between this latest shooting and the attack on the Paris offices of Charlie Hebdo, a satirical newspaper that had repeatedly made fun of Islam and Mohammed. The killers burst into an editorial meeting at the paper shooting eight staffers in the head, execution style, and four others including two police officers. The killers reportedly shouted, Allahu Akbar, God is greatest, and the prophet is avenged. France has been alternately cracking down and coddling radical Islam for years now, and there's always been a fear that something like this could happen. A stunned France was in mourning Thursday as police and security forces hunted for the two suspects still at large. The third suspect, an 18-year-old, turned himself in to police. French Prime Minister Manuel Valls said there were several arrests overnight in the hunt for the brothers Sharif and Saeed Kouachi. Both were born in France. The massacre at Charlie Hebdo triggered demonstrations of solidarity around the world. Tens of thousands gathered in Paris carrying signs that said, I am Charlie. This man said, we're doing this for freedom of speech. We're mobilized. We raise our pens and we won't get down. The head of France's official association of Muslims, Dalil Boubacour, was in damage control mode, saying the killing wasn't done in the name of Islam, but was in fact a blow struck against all Muslims. The massacre will only strengthen far-right National Front leader Marina Le Pen, who said France must stop living in denial and stand up to Islamic fundamentalism. Germany, too, is seeing a populist backlash against Muslim immigration. The organization Pegida is seeing tens of thousands of Germans turn out for demonstrations against Muslim radicalism and immigration. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Along with massive vigils held in France, supporters have been rallying around the world. French citizens in the U.S. joined with Americans last night from Washington, D.C. to San Francisco. It's like a small 9-11 for us. I mean, it's like everybody's shocked. I'm really sad first, angry, really angry as well. I'd like the, my government to do something about this extremist uh, Muslim. Not the whole Muslim population, but the extremist. Several hundred people gathered in New York City's Union Square chanting, We are Charlie, in support of Charlie Hebdo magazine. In San Francisco, hundreds held French flags and pens up in the air outside the French consulate to honor the cartoonists who were murdered. ISIS fighters in Iraq have threatened to attack France for a while now. Author Joel Rosenberg says they are the new brand of radical Islam. And he wrote a novel about ISIS called The Third Target, Rosenberg says radical Islam is spreading and it must be stopped. CBN News senior international reporter Gary Lane sat down for an exclusive interview with the author. Okay, author Joel Rosenberg has written extensively about radical Islam and its threat to the West. And he has a new book out called The Third Target. Joel, thanks for joining us. It's great again. to be with you. Thank we you. have some latest news about this attack in Paris. Yes. Uh, what are your thoughts on that and what have you learned? What can you tell us? Well, what's, well first of all, it's horrific. Uh, it's the worst terror attack inside France in a couple of decades, according to reports. Uh, last I heard, we had 12 people dead, several wounded. I've seen some of the video. Uh, there, were, there were neighbors who were sh uh, shooting video from the rooftop of these people. I mean, literally point, they were using uh, AK-47s, shooting people point blank in the streets as well as in the offices of this magazine. Now, the magazine is a, a satirical magazine that has uh, ridiculed ISIS, uh, has ridiculed, uh, there was a cartoon not long ago of ISIS chopping off the head of the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, most recently, just within the last few days, uh, a, a, an editorial cartoon uh, showing the leader of the Islamic State, ISIS, um, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, um, giving New Year's wishes for good health for everyone, uh, good health even though they're chopping off people's heads and killing people. So 
it's clearly radical Islamic terrorism. The question is whether it's ISIS itself. We don't know that yet. Well, you know, an investigation will ensue. If but it he, is, what does it say about well, ISIS? Well, I think well, one of the reasons I wrote the novel was to warn people, uh, to show people that, that if we don't deal decisively and crush ISIS in the Middle East, it's coming. It's coming to Europe. It's coming to the United States. It's coming to Israel. Israel, of course, just this week captured an ISIS cell in the West Bank. They are not, the, the, the Islamic State is not interested in being contained to Syria and Iraq. It sees itself as building a regional caliphate or Islamic kingdom and eventually a global kingdom. And it will kill anyone that gets in its way. Well, we're already seeing some of that spreading to Indonesia. And recently, I know in the Philippines, in South Philippines, Mindanao, where there are many militant Muslims then, right. there, MILF and so forth, uh, they're claiming allegiance to ISIS. ISIS is the new radical Islamic brand. Mm -hmm. uh, they, have, they have come on so fast, so strong. I mean, they're literally, I, I believe it's a demonic movement. I mean, they're not just terrorizing people. They are, it's, they're engaged in genocide in Syria and Iraq. They're trying to uh, eliminate Christianity uh, from those two countries. And they're slaughtering Muslims by the tens of thousands. And what's happening is Al-Qaeda is looking like the moderates. They are denouncing ISIS for chopping off people's heads, for crucifying people. Uh, Al-Qaeda is, is denouncing ISIS for being too radical. Now, you know we've entered, we've entered a bizarre universe when Al-Qaeda is positioning itself as the reasonably sane, in their view, uh, version. But the fact that ISIS has moved so fast, captured 45% of the nation of Iraq, is indicative of, 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 its, of its danger. The people being drawn to it are much more bloodthirsty uh, than other, even radical Islamic terrorists. More radical than Hamas, although it's in the same category, more radical than Hezbollah. And I'm concerned uh, that Western leaders, including our president, are simply too complacent. You know, a year ago today, uh, President Obama was giving an interview to The New Yorker, January 7th, uh, 2014, and he said in that interview that ISIS was not serious, that they were a JV team. That misperception, um, as well as pulling all of American forces out of Iraq created the vacuum that ISIS has exploited. It is dangerously cold across much of the U.S. today. Wind chill warnings, watches, or advisors are in place for more than 150 million people all the way from Montana to Maine to Florida. Caitlin Burke reports on the Arctic cold that's affecting more than half the country. People across the country are shivering together today as extreme cold hovers over the central and eastern U.S. Forecasters say that for many, today is the coldest day of winter so far. It's very cold out here, man. I just sit there and bounce up and down, you know, trying to get like some kind of warmth going. The National Weather Service predicts that close to 90 percent of the country will see below freezing temperatures today. Lake effect snowstorms caused whiteout conditions in some areas. In Pennsylvania Wednesday, the snow caused an 18-car pileup. Three people were killed and dozens hurt. In Chicago, more than 200 school districts are closed because of the cold. The wind chill there expected to be about 30 below zero. And homeless shelters across the country are opening their doors, trying to get everyone who's willing to come inside. This is, you could die in your sleep cold weather. The National Weather Service advises everyone to bundle up. They warn that frostbite can occur in a matter of minutes when you're outside in sub-zero temperatures with exposed skin. A lot, a lot of layers, a lot of layers. Um, have a two, uh, have a shirt, a hoodie, a button-up shirt. I'm wearing long johns, um, some high-tech ones, uh, double socks, and uh, just keep moving. I'm not trying to stand still for too long. Another round of painfully cold air is expected to sweep from the Midwest to the east to close out the week. So if you have the option, just stay inside. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. Well, there is more bad news for a Washington state florist who refused to provide flowers for a gay wedding. 
A Washington state judge has ruled that the state can bring a consumer protection lawsuit against Baron L. Stutzman and her shop Arlene's Flowers. Judge Alec Ekstrom also ruled that the shop can be held personally liable for violating the state's Consumer Protection Act. Stutzman says she employs gays and serves gay customers, but that her faith says marriage should only be between a man and a woman. A new report shows the dangers of being a Christian in certain parts of the world. Open Doors USA publishes annual World Watch list, and it shows Islamic extremism is the main source of Christian persecution. George Thomas has the story. From the Middle East to Sub-Saharan Africa, Christians are enduring attacks for their faith like never before. The persecution of Christians is real, it is horrifically violent often, and it is spreading at an unprecedented rate in modern times. Dr. David Curry is president of Open Doors, a group that monitors religious freedom worldwide. He says Christians face the most persecution for their faith in 2014 than in any other year in recent history. We have seen the, the sharpest jump in violent uh, attacks against Christians in the modern era. Open Doors reports that 4,344 Christians were killed for their faith in 2014, double the number in 2013. These aren't Christians who are collateral damage in a, lar in a larger uh, uh, war. These are people who are targeted because they choose to worship Jesus, because they want to read a Bible, and, and that's shocking. On Wednesday, the group released its annual Welcome World Watch list, to ranking the that. top 50 countries where Christians face the most persecution. North Korea topped the list once again for the 13th year in a row with some 70,000 Christians reportedly languishing in prison camps. The government has a paranoia about any ideology which they see as a threat to their, their cult worship of their leaders. And so they rank enemies of the state. Christians are the number one enemy of the state in North Korea. Rounding the top 10 worst violators are Somalia, Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, Sudan, Iran, Pakistan, Eritrea and Nigeria. But in a majority of the countries, Curry says elements of one religion above all poses the greatest threat to Christians. Islamic extremism is a driving force, is really the driving force in 40 of the top 50 countries on the world watch list. The majority of the deaths last year happened in Nigeria, where kidnappings and murders by the Islamic group Boko Haram killed 2,484 Christians. Nigeria needs prayers. Nigeria need prayers. Damaris Atsen has experienced Boko Haram's wrath firsthand. In 2010, her husband was stabbed to death by the Islamic fighters. She said it has taken the grace of God to forgive her husband's killers. If I do not forgive, the Lord will not forgive me. So I have to forgive because Jesus teaches us to forgive one another. Meanwhile, the terrorist group known as Islamic State, or ISIS, continues to drive hundreds of thousands of Christians from Syria and Iraq. Curry worries their success at targeting minority faiths is giving impetus to other radical groups to pursue similar tactics around the world. So you have the Islamic State, their tactics, their methodology now being adopted by Boko Haram, by al-Shabaab and others. And so I think this means that while this year was the worst ever, things look very troubling for years to come. Open Doors says the World Watch list is a wake-up call to the tragic suffering of Christians around the world. We need to make the persecuted church an issue of prayer and a support uh, because there's a genocide happening. George Thomas, CBN News. Coming up, fighting the flu with your smartphone. We'll show you a new app that promises to help you outsmart the disease. Scientists are literally turning to dirt to find new antibiotics. Researchers at Northeastern University in Boston say they've discovered a new method which extracts drugs from bacteria that live in dirt. It could help scientists treat infections that resist commonly used drugs. The scientists published their findings in the medical journal Nature. Researchers say the new drug known as Texobactin was tested in mice and easily cured severe infections. They believe it's so powerful that bacteria will not become resistant to it. 
Well, if you're trying to avoid getting the flu, you may be able to use your smartphone to outsmart the virus. New technology offers tools to help you find out everything you need to know about the flu this year's flu season. There are a number of good free flu apps. One of them is called Wello Watch. According to Rick Heller, president and CEO of Wello, his app shows you the risk of getting the flu at your current location and the consequence of coming in contact with a sick coworker. If a sick person walks into uh, what we call a red day, which is indoor, very dry, and we would be talking about a 20, 25% relative humidity as today here in Dallas, then that person would have a very good chance of, of the virus that they exhale, not sneezing and coughing, although that's included, but the virus that they exhale because they're fevered and they're sick would actually be preserved and then circulate throughout the facility then obviously sickening possibly well people. And you can find out more about how the app works by watching the full interview at CBNnews.com. Up next, the Global Congress coming to Jerusalem this spring. Take a tour of the Holy Land and get empowered along the way. Welcome back. One of the largest gatherings of Pentecostal leaders is heading to Jerusalem. They call themselves Empowered 21. The group's mission is to shape the future of the global spirit empowered movement. Dr. Billy Wilson, global chair, co-chair of the Empowered 21 conference, talked with Wendy Griffith about the event. Empire 21 is really a uh, relational network of ministries and leaders and denominations all over the world that are Pentecostal or charismatic Christians. These are Christian believers that believe that God is still at work in the world. We believe in the gifts of the Spirit, divine healing, speaking in tongues, right. the manifestations of God in our generation. And we're all working together across denominational lines. Every major denomination in that movement is participating in Empire 21. And we're working together on unity, uh, on the future, and especially on connecting new generations to the power of the Holy Spirit. This movement is the fastest growing branch of Christianity in the world. Mm. But the real question is, what about the future? Yeah, how, how do we reach this next generation? Right. What about the next generation, and how can we connect with them in a way that will uh, allow them to be filled with the Holy Spirit in the days ahead and evangelize the world? Social media. but. Uh, beyond that, this generation is looking for more than just a moment uh, or just a Twitter uh, yeah. feed or, uh, or a Facebook post. Right. They're really looking for authenticity and reality. And hmm. so what we're finding, Wendy, is among the spiritual fathers and mothers of this spirit-empowered movement is this real desire to touch the next generation. Right. The good news is the next generations are also have a desire to connect with the fathers and mothers. It's a Malachi mm. 4 moment. Wow. God is turning our hearts toward each other. Mm. And in that connection, that intergenerational connection, we believe the baton of spirit empowered, passionate Christianity can be passed. Dr. Wilson, what does worldwide revival look like? We, we toss that term around a lot, revival. We all want it. What will that look like? I believe God's desire in our generation is to literally flood this planet with His presence so that every person on earth has an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. What are the barriers, though, to seeing worldwide revival? Well, obviously, unity is one of the barriers. Satan right. knows if he can divide the church, he can conquer the church and stop right. the church. I think also is, uh, is the need for spiritual power. Jesus was serious when he said, don't go anywhere yet, even though I'm resurrected until you are filled or empowered mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit. So we need the same power they had in Acts in the book of Acts in our generation in the 21st century in order to impact our world for Jesus, Jesus Christ. Right. Now we have a lot more tools in our day. We have technology, we have television, we have the web that we're using, but we still need the power of the Holy Spirit to penetrate into the hearts and minds of men and women mm. and help them understand that this Jesus we're talking about that was crucified 2,000 years ago and rose from the dead is real. Mm. He's alive. He can change their life Do you by think His power. We're living in a, a time where we could reach every single person on earth with the gospel? Amazingly, yes. Uh, in every nation, there's someone filled with the Holy Spirit. And if we can unite together in this movement and use the technology available to us, 
I believe every person on earth can have an opportunity to know Jesus as their Savior. And that's what this Empower 21 Global Congress is about in May. We're meeting in Jerusalem on the right. week of Pentecost. Actually, that Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. Nice. So we're in the place of Pentecost on the week of Pentecost to wow. pray for a new Pentecost in the 21st century. Well, don't be surprised if a mighty rushing wind comes through there. This is our hope and prayer, <laughs> Wendy, and if we're If somebody we're um, would like to be there, but they can't make it all the way to Jerusalem, how can they participate? Well, of course, we'll be streaming online. We'll be doing a number of things with television media around the world, but don't give up on coming either. Sure. If, you're, if you're watching this, uh, Sign up. Give yourself a chance. Believe God. Uh, to be in the Holy Land with believers from around the world. We have over 130 people speaking at this event, some of the mm. most anointed ministers of our generation. And to be honest, you don't want to miss it. You ever been, you know, ever been told about something and said, man, I wish I hadn't missed that. Yeah. Well, this event's going to be one of those things. Don't miss this moment. I believe mm -hmm. it has the potential to be one of the most significant gatherings in the history of this movement. And I know you want to be there. I want to be there and see what God's going to do. Very exciting. Dr. Billy Wilson, thanks so much for being with thanks, us today. Thanks, Great job. And finally today, what could have been a tragedy in New Zealand turned into a story with a happy ending. A plane with 13 skydivers on board had engine failure just minutes after taking off, forcing everyone to jump off the plane before it burst into flames and plunged into a lake. Saw everyone deploy out of the plane and then... Um, Next minute he was in the lake. Parachuting down, like slowly. Yeah, I think the pilot, he must have been the last one to get out because he ended up in the blackberries. The fact that anyone survived is amazing. Yeah. Well, all pe 13 people aboard the plane landed safely. Of course, Ephraim, not the landing they were originally mm, intending, but no. a, a good landing. Indeed. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, that is it for now on CBN News Today. You can find more of our exclusive coverage of the issues that you care most about at CBNNews.com. Want to hear what you think about the stories you've seen here today? You can do it on Facebook or at CBN News on Twitter. Hope you'll join us again right here next time. It's Thursday. Make it a thankful one.